On Monday, September 25th, 2000, the father of 11-year-old Christopher Aaron Morris returned to his home on the Shepherd Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas, to find a horrific and unthinkable scene. His son's lifeless body tucked into the dishwasher, and disturbingly, the body had been run through a wash cycle, a grotesque attempt to clear away the evidence. More than 20 years later, authorities have been unable to identify the person responsible for this gruesome act. Puzzlingly, few articles exist about Morris's case online, perhaps because the crime occurred on a military base or while the internet was still in its infancy. Nonetheless, his memory persisted on blogs and discussion forums, posts from those who knew Christopher, sharing memories of him and frustrations with law enforcement's apparent inaction. However, the commentary took on a new shape with a strange and unsettling question. What if Christopher Morris never existed at all? If you're like me, you're looking to safeguard your online traffic and hide your digital footprint. That's why today's video is brought to you by Surfshark. If you're not using a VPN, your online activity could be easily tracked and your personal data could be at risk. By using a VPN, you connect to a third party, anonymizing your online traffic and protecting your searches, interests, and personal information. Imagine you're investigating an unsolved case. A Surfshark VPN can allow you to access region-restricted content and post on forums securely by anonymizing your IP and protecting your identity. If you want to explore the vast ocean of the internet securely and without boundaries, get an exclusive Surfshark deal. Enter promo code PANDOX for an extra three months free at surfshark.deal pandox. That's surfshark.deal pandox. Stay safe out there. The historical record of Christopher Morris's life is quite fragmented, almost as if he has become invisible to history. Most of what is known comes from discussion boards and user-generated websites. Born on March 3, 1989, in Del Rio, Texas, Christopher Morris entered the world filled with promise. The son of Air Force Sergeant Carl Morris and Shirley Shatley, he also had a stepmother named Kelly Morris. Allegedly, Morris lived on Century Street in Wichita Falls, attending John G. Tower Elementary School and martial arts classes. One commenter who claimed to go to school with Morris said he enjoyed playing Pokemon and watching cartoons. However, life wasn't always easy. Morris was bullied, and while some claim it was only occasional, others believe he could have been targeted. A former classmate noted that students at John Tower were on fall break, which would explain why Morris was at home during the day on the 25th. The weather was spectacular. Kids were outside all over the place. Then around noon that day, the laughter of kids playing was shattered by police sirens. That evening, Morris's father came home from work and noticed something was amiss. The plastic dishwashing racks had been removed from the dishwasher. Some accounts state that they had been placed on the father's bed. When the father opened the dishwasher to investigate, he was met with the horrifying sight of his son's body. Some sources claimed that Morris had been tortured, mutilated, and possibly abused before having been placed inside. Others claimed that damage to the body was the result of having been run through the washing cycle. Accounts differ as to whether or not the body was nude when found. Morris was laid to rest in Oak Hill Memorial Park in McAllister, Oklahoma, about three hours away from the Shepherd Air Force Base. Despite the horrific nature of the case, it has seemingly received no further coverage in the news. According to a former classmate, Morris's family paid for a billboard for several years 
asking the public to share any information they have about the case. Yet to this day, the culprit remains unidentified. The tragic story of Christopher Morris remains conspicuously absent from mainstream headlines and online records, but anonymous users across the internet have spent years sharing their recollections of the case online. Many are in pursuit of additional information, and these posts show up in unlikely places. The first apparent mention of Morris's death online was in the comments section of an obscure blog named Penile Code Avenger. The blog's stated purpose is public education on the topic of domestic abuse, exploring cases and the ramifications of domestic violence and child abuse committed by men. The relevant post is titled Child Abuse Deaths on Military Installations and was made in May 2005. It is simply a repost of an article from Newswise. The article details pediatric researchers urging the Department of Defense to probe the rates of child abuse homicides on military bases nationwide, following a study that found children in these areas were twice as likely to suffer abuse fatalities. This article received 44 comments, and it is the most popular post ever made on the blog. Curiously, the post itself does not mention Morris at all. Despite this, all of the comments are about him, with several commenters claiming to have known Morris personally and citing highly specific details about the case. The first post, by user Catania, repeats the usual narrative. I lived in Wichita Falls for a long time before returning to Oklahoma. Shepard Air Force Base is in Wichita Falls. A few years ago, a young boy, can't remember his exact age, five to seven years old maybe, was found in the dishwasher of his family home, which was inside the base. He had been sexually assaulted, tortured, murdered, then his body ran through a full cycle in the dishwasher. Officials speculated the killer had done that to wash away evidence. After the initial report on the local news, nothing else was ever reported on it. Very hush-hush. Not sure why I'm leaving this comment, except that this entry reminded me of that. This post does not seem that unusual in isolation, but taken as a whole, the sheer number of comments referencing the case is bizarre and unsettling. For example, BC Fig 4 writes, I am also from Wichita Falls. I think that it was more than a few years ago. I had heard that no one was home and he was a latchkey kid. When the father came home, he found him because the dishwasher racks had been taken out and in the middle of the floor. It was said that he was being harassed by older kids, and that all logs of people in and out of the base were questioned, but nothing ever happened. I seen a web page put up by his aunt not too long ago, asking for any information. I think about this about every week. I really wish this would have been solved. It probably would have been if it had happened now, but at that time they didn't have all they do now. An anonymous user made an oddly similar post. For those who are referencing back to the Christopher Morris case, this happened on September 25th, 2000. I was raised in Wichita Falls and no longer reside there because of being in the military now. I have often wondered whatever happened. It seems like the case just became cold or like nobody cared enough to continue on with the investigation. How can someone lock themselves in a dishwasher? This is just like a murder that took place at Fort Stewart in the fall of 2008. I say murder for the following reason. A young girl went home from school to find her mother dead in the closet. The mother was bound and had a plastic bag wrapped around her head, but the military repeatedly said this was a suicide. Seems fishy to me. Another anonymous user repeated the same narrative. It was very disappointing that this has yet to be solved. What happened to Chris runs in and out of my head over the years. My family and I lived in the same base housing village when this happened. I remember that morning when the cops were all gathered by the gate as my school bus drove by. My house was just on the street over. The case petrified my mom so bad that she kept me in a house lockdown. There was no going to a friend's house, the park, or anywhere without her. I didn't know Chris personally 
but the story still terrifies and baffles me to this day. So much about this case does not make sense, and it leaves an uneasy feeling knowing that so many questions are still unanswered. My family's prayers and hopes of closure go out to the Morrises. It's hard not to notice eerie similarities between the comments on the blog post. The comments are written in a clear but somewhat unsophisticated manner and are almost breathless in tone, repetitively referencing specific facts of the case and often opening with a statement that the writer lived in the area or knew Christopher. Another feature of the posts is that an unusual number of commenters provide personal contact information, such as email addresses and phone numbers, and ask others to contact them with information about the case. What could compel so many people to write these strange comments in response to a random blog post that does not even mention Christopher Morse at all? This blog is not the only place where this bizarre pattern of posting occurs. A Redditor found the Penile Code Avengers blog and posted a link with a synopsis of the case. Again, a surprising number of users claimed to have known Morris, to have attended his school, or to have grown up in Wichita Falls. One user writes, I went to the same elementary school as Christopher, was a grade below him, and lived a couple streets over. My mom wouldn't tell me anything about what happened but I heard about the dishwasher bit from the other kids at school. The prevailing gossip was that his dad did it, but as far as I know, that rumor was completely baseless. User Narrow Introduction states, I live nearby as well, was at Burke Middle when this happened. My younger brothers were at Tower in grades younger than Chris. My aunt was a principal there for years and had recently departed. My mom was a teacher at Tower but in a lower grade. So little information was ever released about this case following the initial information. It is mind-boggling. I can't remember where I initially heard the bullying rumors, but it was a pretty long time after his death, if I recall correctly. Another user claims that their father was the forensic pathologist who handled the case. The suspicious nature of these posts did not go unnoticed by Redditors, with user JamesXX commenting, Weird how many of us that subscribe to this subreddit have lived in Wichita Falls. One poster mentioned that they couldn't find much information about the case on search engines, to which user Dally Ann replied, Yet there are multiple posts in this thread about people who lived there or knew of the victim somehow. Very weird thread. The strange social media activity surrounding the case and the lack of coverage from traditional news outlets led some commenters down a dizzying rabbit hole of speculation. Perhaps the real mystery was not who killed Christopher Morris, but whether or not Christopher Morris existed at all. It began with one user voicing skepticism about the blog, stating, The link OP provided is super weird. There's a bunch of people in the comments claiming they knew Chris and asking for information to be emailed to them but the email addresses they each provide are suspiciously similar. Yahoo accounts with similar formatting. I have no idea what this could mean, but that blog site is basically the only source I could find on the case, and the original article isn't even specifically about him, just the comments are. After this, the complete lack of any reliable online sources discussing the case became a major theme in the comments. User DJHJR86 went as far as suggesting that the case was largely fabricated. Am I the only one who thinks this might just be some weird hoax perpetrated by people using a child's real death, but spinning it into something totally sinister? There are zero hits for his name other than the Find a Grave website in this link which seems odd that an 11-year-old boy who was found tortured and murdered on a military base wouldn't even be a blip on the radar for any news-related website. There's nothing about this case online. It's very difficult to find verifiable information about Morris's death. Searches of newspaper archives and aggregators turn up little information of relevance except additional blogs and forum posts. Outside of dubious social media comments, it's as if Morris's death simply does not exist on the internet. 
Is it really possible that the unsolved death of a child in such a gruesome manner could be ignored by the media for decades? Or could it be more likely that trolls concocted an elaborate hoax around the death of a child for some sick purpose? One poster hypothesized that the case was a sinister copypasta. Another theory is that it could be some bizarre scam. The posts containing contact information and asking others to call or email could have been made by nefarious actors seeking vulnerable people to prey on. Or perhaps the death was real, but it was simply a tragic accident that was misrepresented by true crime fans desperate to inject mystery. In a later thread, someone claimed to have found proof that the case was real, linking an imager album containing screenshots of numerous archived articles from the Wichita Falls Times Record News. The articles verified most of the claims about Morris's death online, but some commenters remained skeptical, voicing suspicions that these articles too could be part of the hoax. They could not locate the articles themselves by searching on the newspaper's website, and no URLs were provided. User Nutella Time wrote, I'm curious to know where these newspaper article screenshots came from, because when I searched the Wichita Times Record News archives, I couldn't find any of them. Jeff Hall appears to be, or has been, a legitimate reporter with the paper, but there's a gap in the archives from 1999 to 2005, so none of the articles pictured in the screenshots are available online. User Electrical Syrup 861 commented, I really think this one is a weird, sick hoax. I can't verify those news articles are legitimate after poking around in the databases I have access to. And it's sketchy that the URLs have been cropped out. There seems to be no effort by any living relatives, teachers, or childhood friends who would be adults by now in the past 23 years to find justice. The majority of the media coverage of Morris's death would have occurred in the early 2000s when the internet was in a relative stage of infancy. At the time, the lifespan of an average website was only about 75 to 100 days. And while major national newspapers have the resources to maintain comprehensive online archives, the same might not be true for local papers in Wichita Falls. At the time, the Google algorithm highly favored blogspot posts and the first ranking website for Christopher Morris contains many keywords related to the case, such as child abuse, death, homicide, Air Force Base, and 2000. Someone disturbed by the case likely searched these terms, found this blog, and posted a comment related to Christopher Morris. As a result, future searches on the case were even more closely tied to this site driving more traffic and curious commenters remarking about the Morris case. And while this may be how an unrelated blog post became the ranking search on the topic, it does not help us get any closer to the truth of what actually happened to Christopher Morris. Among millions of newspaper articles, there's only one fleeting mention of Christopher Morris. The obituary section of the September 30th, 2000 issue of Tulsa World, which states tersely, Christopher Aaron Morris, 11, student, died Monday, services pending. This article confirms there was a young boy named Christopher Aaron Morris who died on the 25th of September somewhere near Oklahoma. Yet there appears to have been no media coverage of his supposedly horrific and mysterious death. One user on Reddit shared a fascinating piece of evidence. Articles about the case scanned from two local newspapers, the Burke Burnett Informer Star and the Shepherd Senator. The articles, published in the wake of Morris's death, provide few clear details about the case. The Shepherd Senator article states that a town hall following Morris's death attracted more than 600 attendees, and that investigators have consistently said they see no threat to the Shepherd community. The article seems to imply that the death was accidental and advises parents to supervise their children while using the dishwasher. 
Another article provides mental health advice to help children cope with the event, while the Burke Burnett Informer star writes about projects to honor Morse's memory at John Tower Elementary School. Assuming that these articles are legitimate and not themselves part of some bizarre hoax, they corroborate several parts of the narrative that has been shared on social media. But what is missing is the sense of mystery and the implication of foul play. If we are to take these articles at face value, they would imply that Morris's death was merely an unfortunate accident. A breakthrough occurred recently when Morris's younger sister, Ashley McCarthy, appeared on a podcast to give her account of the events and dispel rumors about the case. She described her brother as a big nerd who liked Cars, Star Trek, and Power Rangers and had a good relationship with his father. His personality was hyper and some of his teachers had suggested that he might have ADHD, but his family dismissed this as they didn't want to put their son on medication. According to Ashley, on September 25th, school was out and the kids were at home. At the time, Morris's biological parents were separated and he was living with his father. His mother planned to take Christopher and some of the other kids on a trip to Oklahoma, but his stepfather didn't want Christopher to come, so he stayed with his father at Shepherd Air Force Base. His father left for work, and Christopher was at home alone, which wasn't unusual according to Ashley, as the children were fairly mature and self-sufficient for their age. Notably, the dishwasher wasn't working, and a repairman had been scheduled to fix it that day. Ashley is unsure of when the repairman visited, but it obviously must have been at some point before Christopher's body was found. Morris's father stopped by the house around 11 a.m. to eat lunch. He saw Christopher, and there seemed to be nothing amiss. He returned to work about an hour later. At 2 p.m., he came home early and Christopher was not there. While looking for him, his father noticed that the dishwasher racks were out of place. McCarthy says that they were found on his bed, but it's unclear whether this means Christopher's or his father's. Upon opening the dishwasher, he made the horrifying discovery of his son's body. Ashley denies that Morris had been tortured, mutilated, or assaulted before being placed in the dishwasher. She states that these claims originated from her cousin, who posted them on a forum where they were later read and repeated uncritically by others, and they were not confirmed by police reports. However, Ashley does state that Christopher's body was nude and his clothes were in a pile next to the dishwasher. Christopher's unsolved death and the subsequent events took a devastating toll on the family. According to Ashley, his biological mother developed substance abuse problems and passed away in 2014. His father, whom she claims was the main suspect of police, suffered from mental health issues and had a stay in a psychiatric hospital. Ashley herself suffered from severe harassment and bullying as a result of her connection to the case. She believes that the police failed her family by unfairly singling Morris's father out as a suspect and refusing to consider other possibilities. She points to one intriguing piece of evidence that was never followed up on, an unidentified handprint on the exterior of the dishwasher. This handprint was tested, and according to Ashley, it did not match anyone who was known to have been in the house. She mentions two potential suspects for the murder, the dishwasher repairman and an unnamed teenage boy who was visiting family on the base at the time. She thinks the repairman is an unlikely culprit, as he was probably investigated thoroughly by the police, although she admits that she is unsure to what extent this occurred. Ashley's basis for suspecting the teenage boy is that during the investigation, he revealed that he knew facts about Morris's death that had not been publicly disclosed. She claims that the boy returned to Florida a few days after Morris's death and was not investigated further. When asked whether or not the death could have been an accident, Ashley is skeptical, unless it was an accident in the sense of children screwing around without realizing how dangerous their actions could be. According to her, the dishwasher had a latch that could only be closed from the outside, and it would not operate unless the latch was closed. She mentions that a few days before his death, Morris had beaten up another child who was bullying a disabled boy at school. 
Perhaps this child or one of their friends had put Morris in the dishwasher as retaliation. Ashley thinks another motivation could have been robbery. Her father, on the other hand, insists that the death was accidental. The autopsy was reportedly inconclusive and could not provide insight into whether or not the case was a homicide. Despite investigative efforts from the FBI, local police, and military police, much of the evidence, Ashley claims, was contaminated or lost. Returning to the purported screenshots from the Wichita Falls Times Record News, we can see that they support Ashley's narrative. An article published the day after the incident described the death as accidental, but later articles cataloged the ongoing investigation and suspicions of foul play. According to a report from September 27, 2000, Morris and his father were living at 121 Century Street in the Cape Hart housing area at the time of the incident. Morris was on a two-week break from school, and it was reportedly unknown whether he was alone at the house. Reports from a police sergeant confirmed that Morris's body was nude when found and denied that it had been mutilated. His father discovered his body in or near the home's dishwasher around 4.30 p.m. and had to be hospitalized due to shock. Another article offers a tantalizing clue to the mystery, detailing how a friend of Morris's mother claimed to have private information indicating that the murder was part of a burglary plot. A few months after Morris's death, his family began offering a $15,000 reward for anyone with information about the incident. One woman saw the reward poster in a pawn shop and was reportedly shocked. She claimed that a friend of hers knew who was responsible for Morris's death. When asked to elaborate, the friend, who was known to abuse drugs, gave multiple and contradicting accounts of what happened. A few months later, preliminary forensic results were available. Reportedly, no fingerprints from anyone besides family members were found inside the house and there were no other signs of an intruder. The autopsy revealed that the trauma to Morris's body was the result of having been run through a washing cycle and that none of the injuries had occurred prior to him entering the dishwasher. The final autopsy results were delayed due to a backlog at the state lab, and the pathologist was ultimately unable to establish whether or not the death was accidental. The investigation may not have been as thorough or careful as the family desired. Harvey Morris, Chris's grandfather, complained that the investigators contaminated the scene and left soda cans behind. Could Morris's death really have been an accident? Accidental deaths involving dishwashers are not unheard of. In 2007, there was a widely reported case involving an 18-month-old boy when the dishwasher automatically began running when the door closed. According to McCarthy's account, this would not have been possible with the model of dishwasher that the Morrises owned, but with over 20 years having passed since the events, it's possible that witness recollections may not be perfect. Another fact that complicates the accident theory is Morris's age. It is not difficult for a toddler to crawl inside a dishwasher but it would be a tight fit for an 11-year-old boy. It is hard to imagine Morris climbing into the dishwasher without at least having been coerced by others. On Reddit, posters speculate that Morris's death could have been a misadventure while playing with friends or a bullying incident that ended in a horrific outcome. But if this is the case, it means that someone has kept this dark secret to themselves for more than 20 years, despite the family's campaign to gather information about their child's death. Ashley McCarthy and an unnamed person who spoke to the Times Record News both claimed that Morris may have been murdered as part of an attempted robbery. Unfortunately, neither source provides any further details that could help flesh out this theory. The unidentified handprint mentioned by McCarthy could point to the possibility of an intruder. This claim is not corroborated by any of the media reports that are available online. Another avenue of internet speculation is whether or not the murder could have been committed by someone in or close to the family. When asked why someone might consider her father a suspect, all that Ashley McCarthy could come up with was that he was known to have a low tolerance for stupidity 
and that people might have assumed he was frustrated by Morris's hyperactive personality. She vehemently denies this theory and reports that Morris and her father had a loving and positive relationship. One commenter argued, Stranger murders are rare. Stranger child killings are even more rare. But stranger child killings in the kid's own house, statistically and realistically, the kid died at the hands of someone he knew. Father, uncle, babysitter, friend. I'd bet my life on the fact it was someone this kid knew well. Another user speculated that Morris may have been murdered to cover up sexual abuse by a relative or friend of the family, and pointed out that the culprit must have been someone that Morris was comfortable letting into the house. It's unclear to what extent this theory is informed by the rumors that the body showed signs of abuse which are not supported by the available sources. The dishwasher repairman and the teenage neighbor mentioned by McCarthy present other intriguing possibilities for the culprit, but the lack of information available prevents us from knowing whether or not these suspects were ever investigated and what the conclusions might have been. The online activity surrounding Morris's death is undeniably strange, but in light of what we know about the case, it's understandable. Local news articles and comments from Wichita Falls residents paint a picture of how this child's brutal and untimely death left an indelible mark on the local community. But the case has gone cold, and due to the ephemeral nature of digital content, it's almost impossible for the average person to find reliable information about it now. More than 20 years later, those who remember Morris are still searching for justice. They're taking every opportunity to tell their stories in the hope that renewed attention might lead to a solution. And through their comments and posts, they're keeping Christopher Morris's memory alive while the mainstream media and digital landscape has forgotten.